What's that referring to? Objection. What is the objection? It's relevant, Your Honor, and it also is calling for speculation. There's no testimony that she knows what this is about. <laughs> That's why you asked the question, Judge. The, objection. the judge and Mr. Adams is laughing at him, bro. I, I, I'd quit right there on the spot. That prosecutor's got flamed by both. <laughs> Day 33 of the Young Thug YSL Rico trial had some funny moments. A female detective testifies about the same incident that was discussed yesterday. Thug's lawyer on cross shows inconsistencies between both detective testimonies who were in the same exact car. Today's all about the same incident where four people got in that car and fled after they shot at someone. Walter Murphy was the only one actually seen shooting and now on social media everyone is trying to say Thug was, but that's just literally not true. The 911 call is being misconstrued on social media. I don't know why it's being spread like a wildfire that thug was shooting when he wasn't a lot of inconsistencies and the state looks kind of bad today with some of their objections i mean shit just went left for them today so yeah hit subscribe here we go first look at thug today he's got looks like a oh that's a spider jacket has spider webs all over it that's a clean ass jacket how much is that bro i need to i might have to go cop that all right well it's 1500 dollars. i don't think i'm gonna blow 1500 dollars on a jacket do you recognize that vehicle in state exhibit 36 charlie Yes, sir. That's a vehicle that I owned. So I'm guessing they stole this lady's car at some point and she's just coming up on the stand to talk about. And back then in 2013, did you ever, did you own a firearm back then? No, sir. Did you ever keep guns in your car? No, sir. So I'm guessing they found some guns in the car as well. The cross on this lady, who's pretty much just a victim, just showing the jury that they impacted this lady's life in a negative way. I wonder if the lawyers get in their car and they have a sick car air freshener like I do from Drift. This is literally the coolest car air freshener I've ever found. Drift is a sister company to Scentbird, which is another company that has sponsored this channel. Amazing fragrances over there too. Drift has a variety of products for your car and your home. Look how sick this is. It clips on, it's a magnet, and you clip onto your visor. And it smells incredible. Last 30 days and it's only five dollars for your first month using my code cuffboys 55 right now all the materials they use are completely sustainable and all their scents are also made with natural essential and fragrance oils what's sick about this car air freshener is that you can get it as a subscription you would receive a starter kit with the clip and the scent and then you can refill it every 30 days it lasts 30 days and the best part is you could change your scent each month and they have a limited edition scents that's cool because you can switch up your scent each month and you don't get used to the same smell over and over the scent that's in this is sandalwood vanilla and I've been using it for like two or three weeks now. Literally smells incredible still two or three weeks later. The subscription is very flexible. You can change the delivery frequency, your scent choice, or cancel your subscription at any time you like. But boys, you can use my code CUFFBOYS55 to get 55% off your first month at drift.co. So it's less than $5 for your first month. Yes, you heard me correctly. Less than $5 for your first month for this sick car air freshener. The variety of scents and fragrances and how long it lasts sold me on this one absolutely incredible drift.co cuffboys 55 only five dollars go right now appreciate you boys here's the rest of the video so we're talking about 10 years ago a little over 10 years ago back in 2013 or you don't know what his plans were for the car he just essentially had the car to use until he would come and pick you up yes sir uh, to loan the car to anyone else no sir okay that, that would not have been uh within the agreement when he would drop you off to school that morning true would have not been in the agreement all right you were not present when whatever happened to the car happened to the car right no sir i have a um, part-time job and i really prefer not to say where, where that is okay. um uh, have you worked in have you worked in uh, a law enforcement capacity? Absolutely. And uh, where did you work in a law enforcement capacity? City of Atlanta, uh, police department. I know that you hesitate. Are you a little nervous this morning? I'm trying to take my breath one at a time, yes. Okay. For over 32 years. Okay. This lady nervous as hell. I was initially assigned to zone three. As years passed, I was promoted to detective where I worked in various capacities such as narcotics. I worked in the narcotics division. She's this nervous and she's a cop? She's one of them cops that hears an acorn and and shoots, isn't she? I was dressed in plain clothes, not a uniform, as somewhat like I am today. So remember how three detectives pulled up on that apartment building? She was the driver, I believe. Can you describe for the jury what kind of shoes you wear? I had on high heels. Okay. I fast forward back to you. Because I found myself daily wanting to motivate my appearance. Because most people think when you're in law enforcement, you have to look like a dude. And that's not always the case. Because um, investigator Robeson L. indicated that the gentleman or the suspect in question in the red t-shirt would be normally hanging out at that particular address in the complex. Initially, I was behind the passenger. That would have been Robeson L. Things moved forward. We drove around in the parking complex and initially heard uh, gunshots ring out and there was a little debate. And so we collectively agreed that yes, it was in fact gunshots. So Porter, who was driving, um, turned the vehicle around and headed back towards. So she wasn't driving actually. I saw a black male in a red t-shirt and he was running and shooting simultaneously. Uh, being in the back seat, I didn't have quite the advantage. And um, 
I no longer saw him. Well, he dipped in the car, in a, in a reddish car. Investigator L jumped out the car because he was in full uniform and he identified himself and approached or had some conversation with someone in the car. The car backed up into a parking space. And once it did that, you could tell that they were about to flight or flee. The car went past L in, with the intent to strike him, but he was- What's the basis for your objection, sir? Oh. Without speaking of objection, just tell me the basis. I'll sustain this a form of the question you can rephrase, sir. So this is the car all the cops were in? Um, I saw a black male in a red t-shirt running across um, the corridor or the open space of the complex, and he was shooting and running at the same time. The person she's talking about is Walter Murphy, one of the co-founders of uh, YSL. He was running towards that red car. Some confusion with some witnesses saying that the driver, a big-breasted woman. So there, some witnesses say there was a woman in the front seat. And I thought that we were extras in the movie Fast and the Furious. I never saw uh, something personally where the car went completely airborne to the other side by the grace of god we did not realize that there were a line of cars parked on the other side of that wall one being an apd police vehicle with two of our colleagues in it that could have been killed that day instantly but the car ended up resting at the rear portion of a laundromat which was next door to the house and once it rests after crashing, multiple people ran from that vehicle, one in particular being a, a black male in a blue shirt. He's being a little dramatic. I mean, I know they did flee from the cops and then flew over this little like four foot lead, rammed into a building. The lady in the cop car that testified yesterday was not really in danger. The same gentleman in the blue shirt ran from around the building. And as we were still in the vehicle trying to catch up with him, because again, I had on heels. I didn't plan on being Jackie Joyner that day. She had on heels, bro. Porter was able to jump out, subdue him, grab him. By the time I reached to where Porter and the suspect was, I was able to take off his belt and make a man shift, a maid shift, excuse me, handcuffs until the cavalry could arrive to assist us. Okay. Other APD officers that we called to assist us for help. And here they go. Absolutely, praise God. Okay. And so now this lady's funny, bro. Absolutely, praise God. They showed up. How would you be able to say that you saw that about three or four people in red shark? Number of heads okay. from the chest up. Okay. Is it fair to say that this was a fast moving circumstance? Too fast, yes, sir. Were you able to make out any further descriptions of the persons that you saw inside the vehicle? Uh, the driver. Okay. Let's walk through it. Um, what description did you make of the driver and any other other persons if you were able to do so? I thought the driver was a female. Oh, I believe the detective yesterday said the driver was not a female. This detective in here saying it was a female. So there's like inconsistent testimonies from two police officers that were on the scene. That would be the right front, uh, the right left, excuse me, the right left side, front. Okay, all right, looking for this. Okay, so it would be the driver's side. Okay, Let me just say it's the driver's right. side. Yes, ma'am. Front bumper. Okay. This bitch just say right, left side. All these police officers involved in this incident seem like f***ing idiots. What's going on? A few moments ago, you indicated that you thought it was a female. I want to ask you, why did you think that the driver of the vehicle was female? Because that individual had shoulder length hair and it was bouncing and waving like most women here would do. This is the yard that they flew into right here. They hit this tree and then went left and flew into this f***ing parking lot right over here. The residence where damn. Impact. God damn. Looks like a miniature tornado came through here. So they busted out from right here and flew over this ledge over here. All right. So this lady came in real nervous saying praise God and shit. Acting a little dramatic. I'm going to be honest. And now Thug's lawyer, Keith Adams, is up to cross. This guy in the red shirt, Walter Murphy, who was who was shooting uh, in the parking lot. But there was also an investigation in regards to Officer Robertson. Robertson. Jack, I thought Jack, what case is Hunter? Answer, 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 and this is a testimony by counsel. Answer, answer, by counsel. Excuse me, this is assuming facts on evidence and counsel is testimony. I'll sustain this effect on him. His question was kind of getting a little jumbled there. Was there an investigation that took place in regards to Officer Robeson L's shooting of the individuals in the car? Objection. Some facts not in evidence. I'll rule that objection. She can answer it if she knows. Was there an investigation in regards to Officer Robeson's shooting or discharging his firearm? Yes, sir. Oh, the vehicle that y'all in go into some of the apartments. True? Yes, sir. All right. What is driving as y'all go through, correct? Yes, sir. In fact, y'all actually followed a gray vehicle that had two young black men in the car. Is that true? I don't recall that. Do you recall how you got into the apartment complex? More than likely following another vehicle. Okay. That is your recollection or your guess? My guesstimation. Okay. Guesstimation. There are gunshots or shots that are heard, correct? Yes, sir. Um, you said that there was some sort of, uh, and I don't want you to say what anyone else said, but there was some discussion in the car about the sound, whether it was gunshots or anything like that. Is that, is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. As you head towards the shots, did I hear you testify earlier that you saw a young man in a red t-shirt shooting a gun? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, just to be clear, I know I'm jumping ahead a bit, but the person in Summerdale who you saw shooting the gun, who would later on be taken into custody, also had a red t-shirt on, correct? Yes, sir. That's not the same person that y'all were looking for earlier. Isn't that true? I have no idea. At the point that Officer Robeson gets out of the police car, the Taurus that y'all are driving, that the person shooting 
the gun had already gotten into the red vehicle that you saw. Is it possible? Is that what you Is, is that what happened? No, sir. No? No. Tell me the sequence in which it happened. When, when did the person that you saw shooting the gun get into that red car? He was shooting the gun, and at some point, as I mentioned in my statement, I lost sight of him, and L indicated that he had dipped in the back car in the back seat. And when L indicated that the person had dipped in the car in the back seat, L was still in your vehicle, wasn't he? Yes, sir. All right. So again, by the time the person shooting the gun got into the red car, L was still in y'all's vehicle. True? Yes, sir. Yesterday, he said that he like had to scream at the guy and the guy just ignored him and hop in the car as he had the gun point at him, like standing in front of the car. Some more inconsistencies from two people that were in the same car. One of them hops out and points the gun at them. She's in the backseat getting thrown around like a rag doll, she says. This shit's all inconsistent as fuck. By the time Officer Robeson L actually gets out of y'all's vehicle to either confront or address this person who, who you've seen shooting, that person's already in the red car, right? Yes, sir. Right. That person's not running and then turning around and running back towards Officer Robeson L because he's already in the car, right? Yes, sir. I mean, these are complete opposite things these two officers are saying from yesterday. You don't have any doubt in your mind that um, you have this one person and you only saw one person, person in red, shooting this gun, right? Yes, sir. Right. You're not able to tell us where in the car he got into, right? Correct. All right. But you know he got in the car. Yes, sir. All right. You know that there were other people in the car. Excuse me, yes, sir. This makes me think that that officer was lying. The dude from yesterday, low key. What you testified to and what you gave a statement about as a female driver of the vehicle, correct? Correct. I think the words you, you um, said earlier were that shoulder length here and bouncy here, something like that, right? Yes, sir. The person had a ponytail, didn't they? Objection. Mischaracterization of the testimony. It's a question, Justice. I will hold the objection. The person had a ponytail, didn't they? I can't concur that. Okay, do you remember? I remember shoulder length here. Okay, the person that you identify as a female driver had blonde here. That I don't recall. Do you remember whether or not the person that uh, you saw that you identified as a female driver was a heavy chested woman? Don't recall that. Or did you see Officer Robeson shoot any shots towards the back of the car? No, sir, I did not. Did you hear additional shots? I said that I heard shots, but I didn't know who was making those shots. Yes, sir. Right. I, I guess what I'm, what I'm asking is, were there a sequence of shots before the car was hit and then after the car was hit? That I can't confirm. Okay. So I think what he was trying to do there is make it look like the detective was shooting at a car that wasn't really a threat to him anymore. Would I be correct in saying that the person who had on the red shirt did not scatter because he was on the ground? I have no idea. I didn't get to that parking lot to look in the car. Was there someone uh, at some point, either then or afterwards, was there someone in a red shirt who with a gunshot wound sit uh, on the ground? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. It's assumed facts and evidence and outstanding objection. Your Honor, that's been testified to. You, you can refrain and ask her some other questions. It, it doesn't assume facts and evidence, though. The, the, the objection mean, is simply incorrect. Wait, 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 wait. Walter Murphy got hit by one of them bullets? That's what the blood was yesterday. At any point, did you see the person in the red shirt that you seen earlier with a gunshot wound? No, sir. Okay. Was there anyone with a gunshot wound with a red shirt on, laying on the ground? Not that I witnessed. Did you see anyone else with a gunshot wound? Your Honor, uh, that's the answer. And it calls speculation. I will the objection. Come back to that. But did you see anybody else who had received a gunshot wound of people in the car? No, I did not. Okay. What about the person that you identified as the lady? Where did that person come from or go when the car came to rest at the coin laundry? I don't know, sir. If officers arrive on the scene and they're looking for suspects, they would want to get that information from the individuals who observed the incident, right? Yeah. Objection. It's speculation. Yeah. She's a police I'm, officer. I'm going to overrule the objection. The prosecutor right here has been objecting to shit and getting overruled like five times, bro. Did you mean three to four black males or did you mean three three black males and maybe a black female? Objection. Ask an expert. Oh. It's a I'm not overruled the objection. Did you see a lady scatter too? The lady that you saw driving? <laughs> no, sir. No? So so did the, the lady stay inside of the car? No, sir. As I indicated, they all scattered. Everybody in the car? That was in the vehicle. That would include the lady driving the car, right? Objection. Yeah. Ask an answer. I stand objection. When you hear on, on the, the radio, right, police officers listen to, when you hear something like Phoenix or Phoenix One, what are they referring to? Objection. What is the objection? It's relevant, Your Honor, and it also is called speculation. There's no testimony that she knows what this is about. <laughs> That's I'll, why you asked the question, I'll Judge. I the objection. I was first seeing whether or not she knows anything. The judge and Mr. Adams is laughing at him, bro. That prosecutor, oh my God, I wouldn't show up to work. I, I, I'd quit right there on the spot. That prosecutor's got flamed by both the judge and the defense. They both laughed at him. He didn't say what the objection is. He said, that's why you asked the question. That's why there hasn't been any testimony about it, because you have to ask the f***ing question. And that's pretty much it for today. It was really short. There was only like literally two and a half hours of action. Two and a half hours was the only time frame that they got stuff done. <laughs> Like there's so much time wasted in this trial. I don't understand what's going on. Comment down below what you think about these testimonies about this whole shooting car chase thing where no one's being identified besides Walter Murphy. Once again, Drift.co. Thank you, Drift, for sponsoring this video. Amazing air freshener. Go in the link description right now. Thanks for sponsoring it. Look at that up there. Just absolutely beautiful. Drift.co right now. Cuff 55. Go right now. Go right now. Go right now. <laughs>